Okay, we've put that back in the vise now um, with the face that I've just machined up against the fixed jaw. Um, and then we're just going to just take a tiny scratch off this face to make sure that this is square to that back face. Okay, we've dropped that back in the vise now and we're just going to bring this top face now down to the finished thickness that we need. So we're 15.1 there guys and I need to finish up at 14 and a half so um, I've got 0 0.6 left to come off. So we'll just uh, we'll just do that now. We're set back up now and we're just going to finish the final width this way and um, we're 30 and a half at the minute and we need to get down to 25. Okay, we're just set up for the, the two ends now, so we're just going to take a skim off this end, flip it round, and then we're just going to finish it to final length. Okay, that's got that bit complete, so that's finished off to finish sizes and where that sits now is that's going to screw through from there with the two M6 cap screws each side and it'll have a clearance hole through the middle for the, for the M12 and that lines up with the, um, with the edge of the, the V if you like. So that sits down the front of the 
the slide way. And the only reason I've done that, you know, I would have made that all in one piece, ideally. But it was to get access to actually mill the mill the V into here. There was absolutely no way I could have done that with that piece in the way. So that's why that's been made as two separate pieces. That will screw together. Once it's screwed together, it will never come apart. Um, and then there will be a bottom plate then that sits from under here that goes underneath the slideway that will clamp up with the with the M12 cap screw. Okay, guys, we've um, we've got this piece set in the chuck in the chuck in the vice now, ready for drilling. Um, I've set it on a parallel, and then I've just removed the parallel. I've tapped it down, so it's just biting on the parallel. Remove the parallel because I don't have parallels thin enough to get under each side. So this will be fine for what we're doing. So we're just drilling, tapping two holes, and drilling the clearance hole in the middle for the big bolt. So we'll get set up for that now. Right guys, I've cut a piece of um, old gauge plate here, which will do for the sole plate. I'm going to call it that, the bit that goes right at the bottom. So if I look at the, the makeup now, we've got the top piece um, that sits over the slideway. We've got the centre piece that's just making up the front of the slideway. And then this will make the sole plate, which will basically sit at the bottom and provide see if I can hold all these bits together and basically that will provide the clamping uh, mechanism up you know to clamp this tight down so I've, I've managed to cut this fairly close to sizes so we've only got a bit of cleanup to do and this was ground flat stock at one time it's obviously gone a bit rusty I don't intend to even touch the two faces that were originally ground we'll just give them a bit of a clean with a bit of emery paper or something just to take the rust off so I'm only going to block up the outsides of this to, to finish dimensions.
So we're aiming for 35 there. What 35, 1, 4. That's more than close enough for what this is. 35, 1, 3 at that end. So that's fine. We'll just deburr that. Okay, I want to set this up now. So I know these two sides are parallel. I want to just get the end uh, dimension correct. There's two ways I can do this. I can hold it this way in the vise and flank mill the sides, or I can just stand it on its end like you've just seen me do on the other side. So that's what we're going to do. I'm just going to use a square for that. So we'll just set this up to the square, which I made sound much easier than I'm making it look. <laughs> oh man, you're a clown. We'll do that bit again. Let's have the vice a bit closer to where we need it. Okay. Let's check how much stock we've got on this now. We need to finish at 62, so we've got 0.45. So I'm just going to sit that down on the edge I've just machined. That's going to be more than good enough. Like I said, I bandsawed this to uh, really close to finished sizes, so there's only just been a bit of cleanup required. So I'll just get that deburred now, so that's that blocked out to sizes. I will deburr it. I'm just going to then rub up these faces to get rid of the, the rust on the flat faces, and then we're ready to drill drill the hole um, in for the for the clamp bolt. What I might do is fix some kind of retaining feature or anti-rotation feature onto this, uh, like a dowel pin or something. I've not figured out how to do that yet, but obviously when you're turning the, the clamp bolt, this, this piece is going to want to move with the rotation. So I might just figure out some kind of anti-rotation pin or something just to, you know, mean that it it clamps up and down this way but there's no rotational movement. I'll bring you back when we're doing that bit.
Right guys, we're making this up as we go along again now. Um, I'm just going to, I've had a quick measure with the rule um, and we're going to pop a 6.5mm hole in this sole plate um, as a clearance hole and I know that I'm putting it on the same centre line as the tapped hole and kind of halfway between the, the small tapped hole and the big one. It doesn't matter on this plate because there's loads of room but on the bottom of the underside of the other plate I've obviously got both holes in play um, so that will clear both nicely. We'll put a 6.5mm hole in here and in the bottom of the underside of the other plate we'll put a 6mm hole drilled and reamed and we'll put a 6mm dowel in there um, and that will, or a dowel, I'll probably turn a bit of 6mm bar up or something, I don't think I've got any dowels but um, we'll just turn a bit of 6mm bar up we'll lock tight it into the bottom of the um, the actual carriage stock piece and it will just be clearance in here and that will act as a anti-rotational pin to stop this bottom plate moving around so we'll just do that now Right, something a bit different. I thought rather than do another setup in the mill, I've had all this built up the unit while it's been on the lathe, and I thought what I'd do is just roughly mark the position on the lathe of this sole plate, um, which I just did with marker pens just to make sure everything was lined up correctly, and, and I took it off the lathe, lined it back up to my marker pen marks, and clamped it all up using the M12 bolt all the way through or the M12 cap head, sorry, I must stop calling them bolts. Um, so I've got it in the drill press and what I'm going to do now is just spot back through that 6.5mm hole just to mark, make the mark on the block underneath, then we'll strip it all down and then we'll drill and ream 6mm and I think I can do all of that in a pillar drill, just something a bit different. I could set it all back up in the mill and use the edge finder and do it that way but I just thought you know, just something a bit different from what I normally do. So we'll do it in the pillar drill and see how that goes. So that's all I need. That should have given me a good spot there through now for the for the drill, probably 5.8mm drill that I need to drill a mean for M6. Okay, so we've got a, a 6mm, I've changed this around, we're going to do a 6mm drill. I've searched through all my reamers and would you believe it, I've got no 6mm reamers on a parallel shank. So I've found a quarter reamer on a parallel shank which is 6.35. The clearance hole I've drilled in the sole plate is 6.5 so that's going to be a close fit. I can always open that clearance hole out if it's too tight but that should be there should be enough play in there especially being as I've spotted through from the sole plate so I know it's exactly in line. So we'll drill this 6mm and then ream it quarter inch. that you've seen very little of that because my arm was probably in the way. Right, 
reaming in a pillar drill, not a good idea, or well, certainly not this pillar drill, because it doesn't really go slow enough. Um, slowest speed on here is 600 revs a minute, which for a reamer like this is, shall we say, a little bit ambitious. So we'll put some, uh, we'll put some lube on and give it a go. Try and keep my arms out of the way. Reamed it all right, but I thought I'd gone. I thought I'd gone a deeper than that, but that's probably deep enough actually. It will be. I'm just kind of sink that now. Okay, there we go. So that's got a quarter inch hole in there, drilled and reamed. So now I need to go to the lathe and turn up a pin, quarter inch diameter. I'll have a look, see if I've got anything quarter inch dowel wise, but I don't think I do. So we'll just turn a bit of bar stock up, quarter inch diameter, and we'll lock tight it into there. Um, and that's pretty much all the machining complete for the assembly. Um, the only thing I've then got to do is decide whether I'm going to put a pin actually into the side of here as the actual physical stop or whether I'm going to screw a pin into the carriage which I've got the option to do because there's some threaded holes in the side of the carriage so the pin's actually in the carriage and it just butts up to this butts up to this stop um, so I'll, I'll bring you back when I've decided what I'm doing with that 